This module is on dictionaries in Python. So in Python, when we want to describe a new dictionary, we use the curly brackets uh, right here. And then we have keys, which are like the A, B, and C. And then the values, 1, 2, and 3. So if I print D and then in these square brackets, A, that's going to return a value of 1 or I can print the keys of the dictionary as well. So we're going to go over some of these exercises with dictionaries and you can get the source code for all of these exercises on GitHub. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. So dictionaries are a list with a key and value pair. The format for this method of storing values is the curly brackets like we showed before. And as you assign a dictionary a name, you can enter values by putting a value followed by a colon to indicate the corresponding value. And multiple corresponding values in a dictionary are separated by commas, and you can also print the corresponding value of the key using brackets. So we're going to just describe, uh, make an empty dictionary, and then we'll print that dictionary, and then we'll create a new dictionary as well. First value, second value, third value. And these are, this is a dictionary with three keys and values. Okay, and then we're going to print the new dictionary. So let's go ahead and run this. And you can see the dictionary was created, just an empty dictionary. And then we have these values right here. Many things can be done to dictionaries, including changing values, adding new keys, and more. So here is uh, the dictionary, first, second, and third value. We can print the new dictionary, and we'll print the corresponding value for 2, and then change that value. So now it's new dictionary 2, and then we'll print the new dictionary. Okay, and that just with new dictionary 2, and then new dictionary. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, run this. So here is our original dictionary right here with all the keys and the values. Okay, the second value is right here. We've now um, assigned this is different. Okay, so it changed from second value to this is different and printed out the dictionary. We can create another key, uh, just like changing the value, but instead of using the same key name, like new dictionary two, you can make a new one, such as new dictionary four. Okay, so here are some definitions, for example. We have egg and chick. All right, we'll print the definitions and then uh, we'll add the definitions like hatchling. And that's a young animal that has recently emerged from its egg. And then we'll print definitions. Okay, so here is the original dictionary right here. We don't have hatchlings in there. And then here is the next one right here. All right, so if we wanted to uh, modify this further, or we could just print, let's get the, <clears throat> let's see, let's print uh, definitions, and we'll do egg, for example. Okay, and then it's just going to print that definition right there. If we just want, instead of all of these print statements here, we just want the keys, the things that we can access. We can print uh, definitions.keys. And that's going to print uh, egg, chick, and hatchling. All right, so for our incubator project, we might use a dictionary to be able to store key value pairs. But let's just go ahead and do uh, create a dictionary of animals that lay eggs. And uh, not at least three eggs, but at least three animals with a description of them as the value. And we'll make a while loop with an input to ask that for the description of an animal. And the while loop should stop if equal to none. Make sure the loop prints the description of the animal entered. All right, so let's go ahead and do animals. I'll go ahead and do an alligator. Okay, and then separated by a colon. Uh, something that bites you, okay? So, something, uh, I'll just say a reptile. A uh, reptile that uh, is dangerous, okay? 
All right, separated by a comma. If you want to continue on to the next line, okay, you can uh, use the backslash, and then let's do frog. And these are terrible definitions, but I'm just going to do it for demonstration purpose only. Okay, so frog is going to uh, be uh, eggs, uh, lays eggs, and that turn into tadpoles. All right, and then the final one, uh, let's go ahead and do a uh, hummingbird. Okay, flaps, uh, wings, very fast. All right, okay, so here's our dictionary. Um, let's see, oh, I forgot the colon right here. Okay, there's our dictionary, and then in a while loop, we're going to ask the input for the description of an animal. And uh, so let's do while name is not equal to none. And we're going to do this, uh, this loop. And uh, let's go ahead and do name equals, and I'll just do empty like this, just so it enters the loop. And we'll ask for some additional input. Animal name, and then we will print animals, and then in here we're going to do the name. So we're going to print uh, not the definition, but just something about the animal. All right, and let's go ahead and run this, and I'll do, let's see, how about frog? Okay, and then we have something uh, like alligator. All right, and then if I do none, oh, uh, not equals none. Let's see. Um, hmm, key error is can't find none, so it's putting none in there. Uh, it should have. Oh, you know what? I should have put these uh, in the opposite order or broken out of this when uh, it equals none. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll just say while true, so loop forever. And then if name equals none, then we're going to break out of this loop. Okay, so if we do frog, okay, and then none. All right, so it finished the program, and I just made a mistake when I did the while loop. Um, it was able to go and try to uh, access this key, um, and you could put a try statement here, for example. Uh, try to print that, except you could say key doesn't, uh, oh, let me print that, print key doesn't uh, exist. And then you can uh, be able to catch that error, okay, if, the, if that does not exist. So if I type frogs, for example, it says key doesn't exist. Instead of uh, this error, that would stop the program because it couldn't find that key. All right, let's go on to the project and just add a little bit to our final project. We've been doing this each video, adding just a little bit more um, to this. All right, so here we might, uh, instead of instead of just asking what is the target temperature, we could create a dictionary. Um, okay, so this would be the target, and then I'm going to make the curly brackets. And so maybe if it's a frog egg, we don't want it that hot. Maybe we want it to be 25 degrees, and if it's a chicken egg we might need it to be 37 and let's say in our incubator we have an alligator egg maybe that one needs to be just a little bit warmer so we can look up by animal and then assign the target value based on the animal okay so um, let's go ahead and ask for the animal and uh, what is the type of egg? <clears throat> All right.
right, maybe we could uh, print out all of the keys. Uh, print target the keys just so they can see what are the options for this and then instead of asking for the target temperature um, we could say that uh, the target temperature is now uh, target and then in here it's going to be animal all right and then we'll print uh, the target temperature is <coughs> All right, let's do a formatted string right here with TSP. All right, I'll run this. And it's going to connect to the TC lab. What's well, the type of egg? All right, so this is going to be a frog egg. The target temperature is 25. And I think I had something left over here where it's printing out the time list from the last time. All right, I'll just let that go, but I'll go ahead and remove it uh, right here because I don't want to keep printing that out and filling up my screen. All right, um, so there I had it. Uh, we looked up by the type of animal, the temperature set point that we needed, and then we're using 25 now as our target temperature for the egg incubator. Okay, so there it is. It made it up to 23.48 uh, in the end, but we're gonna run this in the end for a 10 minute run uh, and then be able to see how well our program is doing. The next lesson is going to be on taking this data and others uh, like here in a list and we're gonna be able to create a plot to be able to visually show how the temperature control did over those 10 minutes. And then we'll do our final project and testing.